So, so many of us have these wonderful ideas and, oh, wow, that's so funny, you should put that line in a movie. But you just said to us off camera, which sparked this great question, <laughs> that sometimes it's a gentle nudge when something is really great for a script and sometimes it's not. Yeah, I, you know, I think part of the trick is knowing when the idea has entered your brain and rather than just thinking, oh, well, that, that's a funny situation that that happened or that's an interesting situation and not connecting it to, hey, wait a minute, I can write about that. I, um, I wrote a play about my parents and my parents' toxic marriage and divorce and a fairly dark time in my life. And the um, play uh, was going to have two stage readings at the Pasadena Playhouse with a well-known actress playing my mother in, uh, at the reading. And I was very excited about this. And I hadn't talked to my mother in many years at that point in time. And I was walking around really in a sunny mood about, wow, this great actress is gonna be reading my words in my play in front of an audience. And I was so excited. And then I had this waking nightmare that my mother was going to show up at the reading and jump up on stage and say, that's not true, that's a lie. You have to hear my side of the story. And I just sort of laughed at myself for being paranoid. But then it occurred to me, I went, hey, wait a minute, that's a good idea for a play. Someone who's been writing about their family and their family descends upon them. And it's not a fully formed idea. You have to then do your work as a writer and say, okay, so who are these people? Why haven't they talked to each other? What happens when the person uh, comes up on stage? How does the situation get? more complex than more complicated or funnier or any of those things who are the other people involved all, all of that work that's the the job of being a writer of, of taking a germ of an idea and trying to grow it into a full-blown um, piece whatever that piece is if it's a web series or, or a play but I think you have to develop the skill of being tuned in to your thoughts and feelings the world around you when you're watching other people in order to know when an idea presents itself. The idea doesn't always say, hello, I'm giving you an idea for a story now. That's part of being a writer, recognizing when the idea has presented itself. Or something as just hilarious as the soup Nazi just hits you over the head. Yes, that's funny, but do we can, can we really base an entire show off of it and a long-standing character? Right, yeah, I, I think knowing the difference between an idea uh, that can sustain a sketch and an idea that can sustain a two-hour movie or a character that's good for a couple of scenes in a couple of episodes versus a character that you can base a series around, uh, I think those are all... Uh, judgment calls that you have to make as a, as a writer and as a series creator that, you know, as funny as the soup Nazi was on Seinfeld, and I adore the soup Nazi character, I would not want to do the soup Nazi series. And there's a reason why they have not done the soup Nazi series, because it's the same joke over and over again, you know, no soup two weeks for you. And you can't build the series around that. You need more complexity. You see this a lot of the time when they try and take sketches that have been very funny on Saturday Night Live and turn them into feature films. And you just say this was a very bad idea. And even with you know really good material, not all material is as good in one form as it is in another form. You've seen plays that have been fantastic plays turned into, uh, it didn't quite work, movies and things like that. Right. So, and then there are, there are pieces of material that work across all kinds of genres. The Odd Couple, success as a stage play, a success as a feature film, a success as a television series. So. And, and I think they're actually trying it again uh, as we speak that Matthew Perry's doing a new version of the Odd Couple of Pilot this season. Well, what are some of the tips then? Because it sounds like it's intuition that's really guiding someone. Or, or are there some things you can work out on paper? Well, I, I think there are certain guidelines that you have to, you need some experience to say, is this, does this character have depth or is this character one dimensional? If the character is one dimensional, which is the soup Nazi, you know, we. And that's why we've only seen him in that, that one dimension. He's at the soup place and, and other people are interacting with him. You can't build a series around it. Uh, I do think it takes some experience. And again, I think it takes some um, missteps sometimes as a writer that you think, oh, this is a great idea. And you write it and realize, yeah, this is, there's not enough to this idea yet. Or I haven't developed this idea enough to get a full series out of this idea. That's, that's some of the experience my students at uh, Chapman have when um, I teach the webisode class there. They each write a pilot for a three to five minute uh, web series pilot. I pick two, we shoot the pilots, edit them, and then make in the second semester 
right? Shoot and edit three more episodes of each show. And sometimes there's great enthusiasm for what seemed the funniest script. And we go and we shoot that. And then there just don't seem to be enough episodes, ideas that come out of it. And so by the third or fourth episode, we're really struggling trying to come up with an idea. 